Hi guys and welcome to our first Facebook Live event. We're here at Guru Headquarters with guest Alina Adams and today we're going to be talking about the New York City high school admissions process. Um, as you all know, tuning in, Guru is a tutoring service that helps students connect with tutors in the New York City area, but we also do specialize in test prep specifically made for middle school students trying to get into high schools in the area. Um, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Do you want to introduce yourself? Well, as she said, I'm Alina Adams. I'm the author of Getting Into New York City Kindergarten and Getting Into New York City High School. I'm also mom of three kids in New York City schools. And for those of you who have been through the kindergarten process, I have some bad news. High school makes kindergarten look like puppies and kittens in a basket. <laughs> it is so much more complicated and so much more time consuming that I'm so grateful for this opportunity you've given me to talk to parents so that they can at least prepare themselves. And if you think that you might be here too early, if you have a child as young as fourth grade, you are not too early. Because to tell the truth, that is how many years you're going to need to get yourself ready, both mentally, academically, and emotionally for this process. Yes, so our goal today is to provide parents with as much information as, and as much preparation as possible to keep everything at ease, parents Everything at will ease. not be at ease. Don't think yeah. it will be at ease. <laughs> but we're going to do our best. As I always tell people, I cannot make this process easy. I can make it easier. Uh, <laughs> well, hopefully we can do that today by answering some questions. <laughs> um, so I guess we'll just dive right into the first question. Um, for parents listening, what are the types of schools that you typically find in New York City? Well, you can break down the types of schools that you have in New York City into three. You can talk about public, you can talk about private, and you can talk about charter. But wait, that's not all. Because in the public school, you have your selective schools, you have your screen schools, you have your limited screen schools, you have your limited unscreen schools, you have your zone schools, you have your performing arts schools, you have your PT tech schools and you have your ed opt schools. That's just public. Then in the private schools you have religious schools and you have independent schools. Some independent schools are religious but all religious schools are not independent. And then you have charter schools, you have traditional, you have progressive, you have K-12, to you have high school only. So while there's three major categories, each category has many subcategories. That's a lot. That is a lot. So if you had to narrow it down to three for the sake of <laughs> segment, what would you say? Well, today we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about specialized high schools, we're going to talk about screened high schools, and a lot of those high schools that I mentioned also fall under the screened label, and we're going to talk about private schools. Okay, great. I so, got it down to three. I should be much happier. So, once you've narrowed down the realm of what kind of schools you want to send your child to, what goes into the decision-making process between these three main types. Well, here's the thing. Here's the nice thing about it. You can choose to look at it as a positive or as a negative. I like to look at it as a positive because I believe more choices is always better than fewer choices. You can apply to specialized high schools and screened high schools and private high schools, and sorry, I'm going to add one more, and charter high schools, <laughs> and you can get into a specialized high school a screened high school or really any other kind of public high school, a private school more than one private school, and into a charter school more than one charter school. So I always urge parents to apply as broadly as they can then when they get their admissions to then decide because you're really comparing the difference between maybe a Stuyvesant high school which is a specialized high school versus Beacon which is a screened high school is different than say Staten Island Tech which is a specialized high school but on Staten Island. If you happen to live, say, on Manhattan's Upper West Side, Beacon, which is on the Upper West Side, might be a better choice for you than Staten Island. So you really have to wait to see what your choices are before you start comparing one against the other. Okay. Okay. <laughs> That's a lot of information to take in. Um, so for, for, for instance, Stuyvesant, that's a public high school. There's no cost there is no cost. There is no cost to any of the public high schools, specialized, screened, unscreened, art high schools. There is no cost to any of the charter schools. Okay. There is a cost to the private schools, but people should be aware that there is a lot of financial aid out there, much more financial aid than people think, and it's going to people who are making much more money 
than they expect. So people should never assume that a private high school is out of their reach because if you're the kind of family that the school is looking for, there's a great deal of financial aid available. Great. Okay. So if I live on the Upper West Side, is it a concern if I'm looking at schools, say, in Brooklyn, like Brooklyn Tech? It's only a concern if you don't want to travel. Okay. Because the fact of the matter is, unlike elementary schools or even middle schools, you're, except for very, very tiny number of uh, public schools, where you live does not matter. In New York City, any student can apply to any public school. So you can live in Brooklyn and apply to Brooklyn. Science. You can live in uh, Manhattan and apply to Staten Island Tech. It's really a matter of how far do you want to travel. Okay. And for applying to these schools, is there a cost per application or is there a general common application? There is for private schools. There is usually a cost to apply. But do know that if you are applying for financial aid, many private schools will waive the application fee. Otherwise, there is no application fee for any of the other schools. Okay. So. Let's talk about deadlines a bit. Uh, when should parents start preparing for all of these decisions that okay. they have to make? Well, there's a lot of interesting answers. To start with, remember all those schools I just listed? There's one more. Mm -hmm. There is Hunter College High School, okay. which a lot of people think is a specialized high school or a public high school. It is neither. It is actually closer to being a charter school in that it's funded by the state. It is not under the auspices of the Department of Ed. No. So you do not apply for ninth grade. You apply for seventh grade. Yes, right there in the middle because middle school starts in sixth, elementary school ends in fifth, high school starts in ninth, not Hunter. Hunter starts in seventh. How do you get into Hunter High School? You have to take a test in the sixth grade to qualify for seventh grade admissions. Can anyone take the test? No, this isn't like kindergarten. You have to qualify to take the test for Hunter. How do you qualify? They use your fifth grade test scores. Remember when I told you you have to in fourth grade? So if you want your child to take the test for Hunter College High School in fourth grade, you better be getting them ready for their fifth grade test because wow. that's the test that the numbers will be used in sixth grade to take the test to see if they can get in in seventh. So that's the earliest. Okay. That's the absolutely earliest one, and now we can just move that aside. That's a separate application that doesn't affect anything else. Okay. Now let's talk about the specialized high schools. First, let's talk about what the specialized high schools are. The specialized high schools are Stuyvesant in Manhattan, also City College High School in Manhattan. You have Bronx Science and the School for American Studies at Lehman, those are in the Bronx. In Brooklyn, you have Brooklyn Tech and Brooklyn Latin, and in Staten Island, you have Staten Island Tech. Oh, here Here's a fun one. LaGuardia School of the Arts is a specialized high school, but it doesn't go on the same form with all the other specialized high schools. Does it go on the same form with all the other high schools? No, it does not. No. It is kind of a <laughs> bastard stepchild between all of those schools. So we'll put that aside for now when we talk about performing arts schools. So we have our specialized high schools. The specialized high schools are schools in which your admission is based on one test and one test only. That test is called the SHSAT. It is given in October of your child's eighth grade year. Now, some people, if they move to New York after the deadline, can take the test in the summer, but that's a tiny minority, and if you're watching this, it probably doesn't apply to you. If you're a New York City resident, your child must take this test. It is given on one weekend in October, and that is it. The score on that test is the only thing that matters. When your child takes the test, and oh, keep in mind, 30,000 kids take the test, and in all the schools, there's maybe about 4,000 seats, and that's in all the schools, so those are the numbers that you're working with. When your child takes the test, they will rank the specialized high schools, and the specialized high schools only, not LaGuardia, not any other schools, they will rank their choices in order. Now, your child's test will be scored, and they will rank all 30,000 students from number one to number 30,000. Obviously, there's a lot of ties, but the fact is they will rank all of the scores. They will take the first name. They will see what that person's first choice is. They will put them in the school. They will take the second name. They will see what their first choice is. They will put them in the school. As they go down the list, usually Stuyvesant is the hardest one to get into. They take about 900 students. So after the top 900, they start 
looking to see if your first choice is Stuyvesant and there's no room, they'll put you in your second choice. That is why it is so important to rank the schools genuinely in the order you prefer. Don't rank them in the order you think you'll get in, because I have so many parents who come to me and they say, well, we only thought my child would get into Brooklyn Tech, so we ranked Brooklyn Tech first, but look, their score would have qualified there for Stuyvesant. Why didn't I get Stuyvesant? But the answer is because they're going to give you your first available choice. So genuinely rank in the order you prefer, not in the order that you expect to get placed. But that's not the question you asked. No. That is just the preamble to the question time you asked. Lines, because timelines, <laughs> timelines. Well, here's the thing. October of eighth grade year, your child is taking the test that will place Great. them for now. That's it. You don't need to do anything else for specialized high school. So October of eighth grade. So what? when do you need to prep? That depends. Here's the thing. If your child knows the material on the test, then all they really need to do is learn how to take the test. The test has a very particular format. And as of next year, there's going to be a new section on it. So really nobody knows what that's going to be. But for now, if your child knows the material, they can usually start prepping the summer before. But here's another fun fact. I'm going to be full of fun facts today. <laughs> another fun fact. The material that is on the SHSAT is not covered in a standard New York City public school curriculum. So most kids don't know the material through no fault of their own. They just haven't been taught it. So teaching a child how to take a test when they don't know the material is like teaching someone how to read when they don't know the letters of the alphabet. They can pick up a few words here and there, but it's not going to do any good. So if your child is in a school that is not teaching the material, what kind of material? There's algebra on the SHSAT. Most schools don't teach algebra in seventh grade, really? which is when you, they do not. Wow. Well, let's put it this way. Most standard New York City public schools, a lot of private schools started in sixth grade. Some of the gifted and talented city Wide accelerated programs might start them a year in advance. It really depends. But as a rule, most kids are not getting the algebra, and grammar is going to be a new section next year. Most kids are not getting that grammar. So if your child doesn't know the material, I know people who start prepping as early as third grade because the fact of the matter is their kids are not being taught the material. So when they go to SHSAT test prep, they're really going to school as a or to learn everything that their school is teaching them. Mm -hmm. So timeline. Look, I'm going to answer the question. Yes. I, I, I'm paying attention. <laughs> I'm going to answer it. If your child doesn't go to a school that teaches the material, you might want to start getting them prep as early as sixth grade. If your child goes to a school, let's say a private school, anyone can take the test. You don't have to be a public middle school student to take the SHSAT. If they're in a private school that's already introduced algebra, that has grammar or part of the curriculum, pretty much the summer before is usually enough time to learn just how to take the SHSAT in particular. The summer before, okay. The summer before their eighth grade year, their not the summer grade. before their ninth grade year. That's something okay. to keep because track of. you take it. You take the SHSAT October of your eighth grade year. Correct. And when do you get those scores back? You get those scores usually in the middle of March. Okay. You get those scores along with your placement in other high schools as well. Okay. So to go back to timelines, I'm, I remember we're still <laughs> talking about timelines. Um, if you're applying to a screened school, now a public screened school is a school in which you have to do something more than just rank it on an application. This is a different application from the SHSAT application. This is a separate application. Now there's 12 slots there. You can rank 12 schools. Screen schools usually require something else. What do they require? I'll tell you. <laughs> Let's see. Some schools require an interview. Some schools require an essay. Some schools require an interview and an essay. Some schools require an essay and a paper that has been graded by a teacher. Some schools require an interview and a paper that has been granted by a teacher. Some schools require that you come in with a talent and write an essay. Some people suggest that you have an essay and an interview. Do you see how this is very, very confusing? Um, you're going to have to contact or at least look on the website of each school to see what they require. And so many of these schools, the interview slots fill up so quickly that I honestly recommend that the August before your child starts, um, eighth grade, 
you go look to see which schools you're interested in, make sure you get your name in there so that you can get them an interview slot, so that you can get them an audition slot, so you can get them, find out what they need. For instance, if they need a test that's been graded by a teacher, make sure you have one that's good. It would be good to have a good test. Um, if they need an essay that's been graded by a teacher, make sure that you have something. If they need the particular number of report cards, for instance, Nest needs to see your report card to see if you can take their test. Or schools like Bard Early College, they have a test, and only if you score a certain number on a test do you get invited to an interview. So you want to start this process as soon as possible so that when you're ranking your 12 schools, which are usually due early in December, say December 1st, you've at least gone through enough of the schools that you have a sense whether you have a good shot at them. Like for instance with Bard, if you didn't get called in for an interview, do not bother listing the school because it would be a wasted slot. You're not getting in. So timeline wise, timelines, um, you want to start in August looking at which school requires what. And some of them do have a test. And if you plan to apply to a school like Nest that has a test or Bard that has a test, you also want to spend the summer before probably getting ready for it. These are all screen schools that you're talking about? Yes. These and are there's 12 screen schools? There's no, 12 there's slots. 12 slots. slots. You can put anything you want in those except specialized high schools. Okay, and so screen schools include specialized high schools? No, they're not. Specialized, specialized high schools different. and screen schools go on different applications. Different. And LaGuardia has its own completely different application process. It doesn't go on the screen and it doesn't go on the specialized. But performing arts high schools like, say, Frank Sinatra or Talent Unlimited or Professional Performing Arts, those schools do go on the screened application. Isn't this fun? Yeah. If you go to my book, Getting Into NYC High School, I actually have this all written down because so many times people come to me, they come to my meetings, and they take really, really good notes, and then they get home, and they look at their notes, and all it says is, ah, move to Westchester. So uh, it's the reason that I wrote both my kindergarten book and my high school books is because you're listening and you think you're absorbing, but it's a lot easier to have it all written in one place. Mm -hmm. What do you think the biggest mistake a parent can make before prepping? It's not so much the biggest mistake they can make before prepping, although as I've said before, just prepping a child who doesn't know the material is pointless. That's a huge mistake in prepping. The biggest mistakes that parents make in ranking their schools is first, not listing all 12 schools. Okay. I have had parents come to me and say, well, I looked at what kind, the profile of the student that the school took last year, and my child is a perfect fit, so I'm just gonna put down two schools, and I'm sure I'll get one of them. Oh, here's something else. Parents somehow got the idea that they must give you one of the schools that you ranked. So they have the brilliant idea, I'll only put down one school. <laughs> if I only put down one school, then they have to give me that school. They do not, and they won't. So that is a huge mistake. Do not. I don't know who started this. Someone's walking around playgrounds starting <laughs> rumors. Um, I don't know who started it, but it is. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Um, that's actually the worst thing that you can believe. But the other worst thing is just ranking schools that match your child's profile exactly. I'm sure your child is delightful and brilliant and interviews beautifully. There are 70,000 children in New York City applying for high school in a given year. A lot of them are also kind of bright, and interview kind of well, and also they, they do things like um, they might have to balance for gender, or they might have to balance for geography, and they won't take everyone from a particular middle school. So I've also had parents say, well, my child had this, 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 and I know a child who actually had lower grades and lower test scores, and they got in ahead of my child. Yes, maybe your child was better than that child, but maybe your child was the fourth weakest applicant in their middle school and they were only taking three. So this is a very blunt metaphor, but I'm going to use it. Let's say that your child is a B student. Now a lot of factors go into play there, but let's say that your child is a B student and you only rank A schools on your form. Now anything can happen in a given year. Maybe there's a particularly weak pool here. But as a rule, if your child is a B student and you only rank A schools, then you risk being shut out, not getting any of them, and going to second round, which is the round where you go to if you don't get any matches, and you go to see which schools still have room, but the schools that still have room might only be C and D schools. So your child who was a B student and had a very good shot at B schools, if you don't put down any B schools, only A schools, will be shut out of A schools and end up in a 
school that's actually weaker than what they could have gotten in the first round. So when you talk about mistakes that parents made, make the biggest one is to only link reach schools. You know, to use the college metaphor, if you only list reach schools, you have a very solid shot of not getting anything and then ending up in a weaker position that you'd been more sort of judicious the first time around. Okay. Um, so two key points. Fill out all top slots if you're doing screen schools. Fill out all well, No, it's not if you're just doing screen schools. If you any public school Okay. Fill out all 12 oh. slots. Because okay. a school that you ranked 12th is still better than a school they put you in. That's another thing. People think you can't be sent to a school you didn't rank. Yes, you can. In the second round, if you put down schools that also aren't a match, they can send you to any school. So I always say even the school you rank 12th is better than the school you didn't rank at all. Second round, is there a second test or it's just There a is not. That's an, that is an excellent question. You're the first person to ask that Great. question. That is a very good question. <laughs> um, it is not. Second round, basically, after the first round of placements, if either your child didn't get a match or you're very unhappy with the match that they did get, you can go and see which schools still have room. And you can apply to those schools. But, again, there's a but. Yeah. But remember, do not rank second round school that you genuinely don't prefer over the school you were matched with because it's not like you'll get a second round choice and then you can compare it to your first okay. choice. If you get placed into your second choice, you will automatically be bounced out of the first round and be put in your second round choice. So only put down a second round school if you genuinely prefer it to what you were assigned to in round one. Okay. So you fill out two sheets, a first round and a second round? Well, first you fill out first round. First round. And then you get told, in fact, this has happened right now, about a couple of weeks ago, in the middle of March, kids got told where they got placed. And today, actually, was the day the second round applications were due. So you were given another sheet with another 12 choices. Okay. So it's not random at that point, whatever school fits. Yeah. Well, at that point, you'll know which schools still have room, and then you can rank them again. Okay. Great. Um... Another topic. So we've talked about types of schools. There's three: public schools, private schools, and specialized public schools. No, we we would talk generally. There's public schools, private schools, and charter right. schools. And then within public schools, we have specialized, specialized screen. We also have art schools, which is one where you'll need to audition rather than take a test. Although some of them also have a written component as well because they want to see your academics. You also have schools that are called tech schools, which are actually six-year schools where some kids can also earn an associate's degree oh, wow. in various topics. You have ed-opt schools, which are schools which take kids with mixed abilities. So if you actually have a child who isn't a very good student, there are very solid schools that um, specifically have take one-third of their kids from the top, one-third of their kids from the bottom, and two-thirds from the middle. That makes three th- that four thirds. That's not what I meant to say. What I meant to say is they take 16% and 16% and then two thirds in the middle. So, um, and actually, if you go to my book, there are links there. The book is electronic specifically because all the forms that you need are in getting into NYC high school. And you can see there's a list of all these schools. There's the schools that offer um, technical degrees. There are the schools that are arts and audition schools. There are the schools that take kids of all different abilities. So obviously I can't sit here. There's about you know several thousand schools in New York City and I can't go through the list, but I have a list of all of them in the book and they're broken down by these categories so you can see what you're looking for. Okay, and for those of, uh, for those of you just tuning in, we've identified types of schools for preparing. You want to start preparing generally the summer before 8th grade. You want to start preparing the summer before 8th grade if your child is familiar, familiar. with the material. Mm-hmm. If the material is not being taught to your child at school, then probably around sixth grade would be a good time to start right. familiarizing them with the material, both the math and the English. And that includes algebra and grammar, you said? Algebra and grammar. There's also um, reading comprehension passages. There's some geometry. There used to be some logical thinking. That's been removed. But I, I suspect it hasn't been removed completely. I suspect mm-hmm. it's moved around a little bit. But the main thing to remember about the SHSAT, because we're talking specifically about the SHSAT right now, is that learning how to take the test is a key part. Learning how to time yourself, learning how to check your answer, because it is all multiple choice, so you can check your answers. Learning how to take the test, because the format is draconian. It's 
It's, it's questions like, which answer would you not put down if you didn't want to be wrong? It's, oh, wow. it's, it's learning how to take the test that is the most valuable thing that you can teach your child. The material, the material they can either learn on their own or they can be taught in school, but no school teaches them how to take that particular test. Although, again, some of the big feeder middle schools are certainly preparing their kids a lot more than the majority of schools. Okay. Sounds like uh, if you're not learning algebra or grammar, a tutor would be perfect. <laughs> you know what? It's one of those things where no matter how smart your child is and no matter what good grades they have and no matter what grade scores they've gotten on state test scores up to this point, which has nothing to do with the SHSAT, it's highly unlikely they're going to teach themselves algebra during the course of a test. So yes, guidance definitely is necessary because even the smartest kid in the world is unlikely to just pick up algebra while they're taking a yeah. test. <laughs> okay. Um, well, so what kind of resources can parents use when researching one, the schools, and two, how to prepare for SHSATs? Because I'm guessing that if you're a parent, you are likely to apply for the SHSATs. Um, where, where can they go to look up the information that they need? Well, again, my book, Living into NYC High School, has all of the resources and all of the information. There are prep books. Mm -hmm. There's also a book that's put out by the Department of Ed, which um, a guidance counselor acquaintance of mine calls The Big Book of Lies. It's basically a book that lists all the public high schools. It's usually given to every seventh grader at the end of their seventh grade year. It lists every school. It lists how many kids they take, and it very offers a very valuable guide to what kind of students they took in the past. Remember I was talking about how you can look and see the profile of which student has been accepted in the past. It might say, you know, last year they only accepted those who have grades above a 90 and um, who, for instance, they have so many seats set aside for special ed. Those are all pieces of information that the book has. So there is a big guide that's put out, but that's public schools and charter schools only. And I can just jump in here to talk a little about charter schools. Charter schools usually accept by lottery only. You do not rank them on the specialized form. You do not rank them on the general high school form. Most of the time, you apply directly to the school. You do it by lottery, so it's possible to get into more than one charter school. Although there is a common app, and in my book, um, Getting into NYC High School, there's actually a link to the Charter Center where you can search for various charter schools in your area. Now the other thing is private schools, and here's another fun fact. Private schools require a different set of tests than public schools do. Okay. So they usually require the IC, the I-S-E-E, -E, and that's a test that's given privately. It's not given at your school. It's not given at a, um, it's, sometimes it's given at the school itself, but sometimes it's given at a testing center. Center. Main difference between private school tests and the SHSAT, you can take the private school test a couple of times. Wow. So that's kind of closer to the SAT in that SAT. respect. I mean, they don't super score. But one thing you can do is you can take the private school test and then a month later take it again. So you can see where your weaknesses are and you can see what you need to work on. So when you actually talk about tutoring, sort of last minute tutoring, mm -hmm. This is a test where you can, let's say, maybe you will take it cold, say, May of your seventh grade year, and then you'll do really well on the English and do much worse on the math. Now you have a guideline to what you need to work on. You can get tutored then, if that's what you choose to do, and you can take the test again and see how did you do, and then you can say, can I do better? Maybe you can get more tutoring. That's, it's completely individualized, mm -hmm. but the main difference between the SHSAT in the private school test is that the private school test can be taken more than once. And again, in my book, Getting into NYC High School, I have a link to the organization that gives the test so you can see where and when it's being given. There's also one more. Remember we talked about religious schools and independent schools? There is a separate test for Catholic schools. And that test also has math and English on it. They're all a little bit different. They're enough the same that you can sort of get your child prepped in just English and math in general, but you also want to get used to the format of the test. The Catholic school test is also given in fall. It's not one that you can take several times. So if you go to my book, I have a timeline, and there's a link once again to the organization so you can see where and when and how to take the Catholic school test. Where can you find your book? My book is actually available online. It is on Amazon. 
It is on Nook, which is at barnesandnoble.com. It's at my website, nycschoolsecrets.com. The reason that the book is electronic is because this is actually something you need to know. Anything that I tell you is true today may not be true tomorrow because the Department of Ed is constantly changing its own rules. My kindergarten book, I usually change about three times a year because they literally change their own rules in the middle of the process. So the reason my books are electronic is that the minute there's a change, I can go in and make the change. And at the end of the book, there's a mailing list that you can subscribe to so that I can also let you know about the changes, about any deadlines that have been changed, and about any new rules that have been changed. Well, you said the SHSAT might change this up. Well, the, it's not might. That's a fact. Oh, this okay. was the last year where the SHSAT had scrambled paragraphs, which was a really, really useful skill in case you're ever walking along reading a book and, oops, you tripped and your book fell into the <laughs> shredder. And then you have to pull things out and you have to put the book back together. You can see how vital that is for the 21st century economy. So this year, this was the last year that they had scrambled paragraphs. Next year, the scrambled paragraphs will be replaced by the grammar section that I mentioned earlier. The math remains the same, although they've removed the logic. But as I said, I suspect they're going to sneak logic into other areas. Okay. Well, this, for me, has been really informative. I didn't know that there were so many types of schools. Well, it's because you don't have a child entering high school, then that's it would be true. terrifying. Yes, that's so. very true. And I, my last question is, is the SHSAT, um, I have well, two questions. One, how many specialized high schools are there in general? There in are. New York, sorry. Um, as I said, there's two in Manhattan, two. there's two in the Bronx, there's two in Brooklyn, and there's one in Staten Island. But remember, LaGuardia it con LaGuardia. is considered a specialized high school, but does not require the SHSAT. It requires an audition and its own process instead. Okay, and then my second one, it's, so the SHSAT doesn't apply for anywhere else in the country? Just No, York. no, we're the only ones that have to oh, deal with it. Yeah. Although, <laughs> although, you know, NEST, here's the thing, NEST has its own test. Big secret. You can't find that. You go to their website. What's on the test? We don't know because NEST is so special that taking the test, we could not tell you. It's a cut down version of the SHSAT. That's all it is. It's an hour and a half version of the SHSAT. So, big scoop, NEST's big top, top secret test is a shorter SHSAT. <laughs> okay. I, I'm big on letting everybody know. Well, that's good. helpful. <laughs> I, I like it. <laughs> um, well, I think we're about wrapped up here. Did we miss any, any topics, do you think? Well, the other option when we talked about private schools, just to throw it out there, is there are boarding schools. It's not something that a lot of people think about. But here's the thing. If you've ever traveled sort of outside of New York, you might see that outside of New York doesn't really look like New York. And boarding schools are really, really looking for diversity, and they are very, very happy to pay for it. So I have had many families of color, but sometimes even just being from New York is enough that have gotten some wonderful, wonderful financial aid to go to boarding schools, because the farther you go outside of New York, the more they're looking for New York City students. And this is, has nothing to do with boarding schools but it's just another thing. Do know that while ninth grade is the key entry point, there's also a 10th grade entry point. You can take the SHSAT again for 10th grade. There are many, many fewer spots. So as a rule, you'd have to get a much higher score to get into Stuyvesant or Bronx Science, but it is possible. LaGuardia takes in the 10th grade, and so do some of the top screen schools. So while ninth grade is where the bulk of the kids come in, if you're really, really unhappy with where your child is in ninth grade, know that you can take many of these tests again and reapply again for the 10th grade level. Okay. Well, great. Lots of, <laughs> lots of information. I will have to check out your book for sure. Thank you. Um, well, thank you so much for coming. Um, I think everyone watching found this extremely helpful, including our own guru and please. <laughs> thank you for having me. Okay, well, great. That ends our first ever <laughs> Facebook Live event on the Guru website and the Guru Facebook. So, thank you. Get some. I can talk more. I no, have more I to say. I'm not sure how to turn it off. <laughs> I mean, maybe just people really want me to keep talking. Okay, good. Goodbye. Bye.